Hello everybody, Mrs. Kip back again from Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. And today we are going to learn about the legend of Betsy Ross. Our core objectives are to describe how the 13 colonies in America evolved from dependence on Great Britain to independence as a nation and retell the legend of Betsy Ross and the flag. I can't wait. Let's get into it. Here is our first picture. Betsy and John Ross were newlyweds in 1773 when they opened their seamstress shop in the busy port town of Philadelphia. A seamstress is a person who sews with needle and thread to make or repair things with made of cloth. John hung a sign outside their house at 239 Arch Street. The needle and spool of thread helped people find their shop. So this is the needle, and that's the spool of thread that it's stuck into. Oh, we know what this is. Remember this? The Boston Tea Party? At about the same time that Betsy and John were having a party to celebrate their wedding, Patriots in Boston were having their own party, the Boston Tea Party, and you remember what a party that was. The Patriots used the sea as a giant teapot, dumping shiploads of tea into it. After that night, the colonies decided to work together to come up with a plan for answering the British demand for taxes. The meeting of representatives from all 13 colonies, the First Continental Congress, was held in Ross's hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Midway between the New England colonies and the Southern colonies, Pennsylvania was an important meeting place for colonists from all over. John and Betsy found it an exciting city in which to live, especially as the Patriots began to gather there. John agreed with the Patriot cause and wanted to break away from Great Britain. One night, Betsy's husband, John, died suddenly. It was very sad and not yet three years since Betsy and John Ross had celebrated their wedding day. Oh no. After John's death, Betsy decided to run the seamstress business on her own. She took great pride in her work and had become well known throughout the colonies for her tiny, even stitches and beautiful cloth. When men gathered in Philadelphia for meetings, they often ordered clothing from Betsy for their families at home. No order was too difficult for her. As war approached, Betsy was asked to make flags for the Pennsylvania Navy. The Continental Army, led by General George Washington, flew one of her flags as well. Wow, she must have been really good. There is a famous legend about Betsy Ross, and a legend is a story that has been told through the years and may or may not be true. According to this legend, Betsy sat in her shop sewing and enjoying the light of a warm summer evening in June 1776 when she heard a loud rapping at the door. John's uncle, George Ross, stood before her with two other men. One of them was General George Washington himself. Good evening, madam, he began. We have an important job that needs to be done very quickly. As your husband, John, was a patriot, and you are known to be the best seamstress in the colonies, we feel that you're the right person for the job. Do come in, Betsy replied. I will heat the kettle for, for tea, and you can explain to me your business. Thank you kindly, dear Betsy, said George Ross, entering the house but I am afraid we do not have time to sit down. As you may have heard, the Continental Congress is meeting here in Philadelphia for a second time. We are on our way to a meeting this very evening. Soon, quite soon, we will, be formal, we will formally declare our independence from Britain. We must be ready with a new flag, for we will no longer want to fly the flag of the British king. Wow, so they really need this ASAP.
Betsy stood, stood still, listening to his words and turning to General Washington, who had taken a scrap of paper from his coat pocket. Miss Ross, General Washington said, this is your chance to show your patriotism or love for your country, as your late husband John did. I have drawn a rough design sketch for the new flag. Please take a look and let me know what you think. We would like for you to sew the first flag of the new nation, 13 colonies united against Great Britain. Wow. Betsy took the slip of paper from General Washington's hand. On it was a square drawing of 13 stripes and 13 stars. Betsy nodded her head and then looked up into the general's face. Yes, she smiled. I accept. I will gladly make the flag. Might I offer just one suggestion, sir? George Washington liked Betsy's suggestion of a five-pointed star instead of the six-pointed one that had been drawn. Then the three visitors turned and left as quickly as they had come. Wow. They must really trust her to let her kind of pick part of the design of the flag, huh? <clears throat> Betsy set to work on the flag the very next day. Taking down a red bolt or roll of cloth from the shelf, she measured and cut seven strips of equal length and width. Then she did the same thing with a bolt of white cloth, this time cutting six strips. She applied her famous even stitches along the length of each strip, first a red and then a white, until 13 stripes of alternating colors joined together to form a large rectangle. Next, Betsy measured a cup uh, and cut a square from a bolt of blue cloth and carefully stitched it into the upper left-hand corner of the flag. Days later, when she had completely finished, 13 white stars almost twinkled in a perfect circle against the dark blue background. Here it is. When Betsy showed George Washington and his fellow representatives the finished flag, they were very pleased. They knew this flag would represent the new country well. This new flag stood as an important symbol to the men who gathered under it on the 4th of July when they voted to approve their letter of independence to King George. One year later, in July 1777, the Continental Congress officially adopted Betsy Ross's flag, the Stars and Stripes, as the national flag of the United States of America. And Stars and Stripes is a name often used for the flag of our country. Well, that was very cool. I didn't know some of those things. So let's go over some comprehension questions real quick. And we'll go over an important vocabulary word from today and that'll be it. All right. Number one, what type of work did Betsy Ross do? What was her job? She was a seamstress. Number two, the title of the read aloud is The Legend of Betsy Ross. What is a legend? A legend is a story that has been told and retold through the years, but may or may not be true. Number three, what is the legend of Betsy Ross? She made the first official flag for the United States at George Washington's request. Number four, what did the first official flag of the United States look like? <clears throat> it had 13 alternating red and white stripes and 13 white stars on a blue background. Number five, why were there 13 stripes and 13 stars? Remember, we keep hearing 13 in these lessons in this domain. What is so important about 13? Represents the 13 colonies, right? All right, an important vocabulary less or vocabulary word from today's lesson is the word alternating. 
In the read aloud you heard, she applied her famous even stitches along the length of each strip, first a red and then a white, until 13 stripes of alternating colors joined together to form a large rectangle. Alternating means following one after another or taking turns. I love to eat my mother's lasagna, which has alternating layers of cheese, noodles, and sauce. What other things have you seen or heard that have alternating items? Hmm, what do you think? How about when you're walking? Your feet are alternating or taking turns one after another, right? Or when you are talking to somebody, you're asking questions and they're answering you and they're asking you questions and you're answering them, you're alternating, taking turns, right? All right, guys, that's it for today. I miss you so much, and I will see you next time when we learn about George Washington, Commander-in-Chief. Oh, I can't wait for that. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.